Hey, this is Manny Moonraker again, a Friday edition of the UFO Report, episode number 156. So, uh, it's not going to be a lengthy episode, but I do have to go back to uh, some conversation we had about Nick the Pope, the genius, the ufology superstar. Uh, I did receive a message from Scott on YouTube, and he says, uh, I'm kind of confused. I thought he believed in aliens and stuff like that. So, I had to do a little bit of research. Because if you remember back at that episode, I said, I'm not sure, but I really thought that Nick Pope was, like, not too hot on the alien thing slash UFO thing. So, I found a couple of uh, quotes by him. Number one, the first quote says, of course, that uh, during the time of his MOD, he did not find definitive evidence of uh, any UFOs from 4.2 far. The other thing is, is that he, and on some other quotes, he also stated that he doesn't believe that uh, UFOs are necessarily from another place. However, that uh, more than likely that they could possibly be uh, advanced aircraft from other nations that uh, people are not used to seeing. And then in another quote he says, Hey, I don't think these things are aliens. There's no definitive proof. But if I had to put my finger on it, I would probably say that these things these things are more like probes and there uh, may be some alien life form somewhere is using artificial intelligence in order to get these probes here. Now, that's all based on the idea from a human perspective that uh, we could barely get our asses to the moon or Mars. So there is no way that an advanced civilization is going to be able to get here in person, live, not Memorex, and abduct people, probe them, you know, and do all kind of crazy crap to them. So that's what it was. That's what that's what uh, my mind was going to, Scott, on YouTube. And I thank you for the conversation because it prompted me to say, oh, God dang it, I've, I've got to go research it. I've got to go figure out what the heck I'm saying. I can't just go by a hint of memory on the back of the brain, especially after all that vodka. It tends to dissipate little by little, bit by bit. But that's what it was. So, you know, Nick Pope, listen, there's a lot of people out there that think that these little gray aliens are not real uh, flesh and bone aliens. That these things might be like robots or androids or some shit like that. Just artificial. They're not uh, life forms. You can argue for and against that. I mean, hey, the fuckers don't have any hair. I mean, well, how many life forms do you know that are completely hairless? Uh, wait a minute, there's quite a few on this planet. I, anyway, so all I'm saying is basically uh, it's a possibility. Because in the article that we have for today, uh, these great aliens are described... And they do seem like maybe it's possible that these uh, gray fuckers uh, may be robotic or android-like or non, uh, non-living non life forms. There's a bunch of uh, technology thrown together. It's, it's very much possible. Uh, but we're talking about this because this particular article is coming out from France. But before we get started on that, because uh, lately I've been hitting you with the social media stuff at the end. And some of you don't even... Don't even stick around that long. Come on, give me a break. Come on. I need to spread the word. You guys have to help me. You know, I can't do it all myself. You know, I could get on here and type away all I can. And I can uh, come on here and play some uh, some nice, like, uh, news music for you like that. But, I mean, come on. I can't, I can't do it all myself. So, listen, if you like the podcast and you've been listening to it, and if, even if you listen to like two or three, maybe the second one, you got to share it. You got to help me get the word out. We have to fight rubber dickers on their own turf. And unfortunately, rubber dickers, they, uh, they use CG and they use some fantastic videos and claims that people eat that shit up. They eat it up. And so you get like people like uh, Lock Nerd and you get people like Scott Z. Waring and, and those guys who make these fantastic claims and their shit gets shared like crazy. But yet, uh, the blue collar guys like you and me and gals, of course, uh, who, who, who could look at this in, an, in a kind of like objective manner. Yeah, we curse a little. Yeah, we walk around uh, like we got a chip on our shoulder. Yeah, that's what people tell me all the time. But 
We're not here to fuck around. And if you want to make sure that a platform that doesn't fuck around gets its message out on ufology, UFOs, aliens, and all that nonsense, and we'll tackle politics too whenever the fuck we feel like it, you got to share it. You got to like it. You got to let people know that you're listening. You know, let them know. It's uh, Don't bring their virgin ears to this podcast because, oh uh, boy, they're going to have to go uh, uh, get doused with uh, holy water after they're done. But we talk the truth. And I'm not one that's afraid to come back and say, let me correct something. Or let me just expand on something I said. I, you know, it's just the way it is. I'm human, you're human, and we're here to talk about the aliens from outer space. And the rubber dickers who make those aliens more than what they probably really are, to be honest. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, let me do my fancy news break. So anyway, don't forget, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know what the hashtags are. You know what the handles are because they're in the description. So come on. Can't you help a brother out? All right, this one is uh, fantastic, and uh, and it kind of falls a little bit in there with what we were just saying about the ideas, only a small part of it, but the ideas that uh, your boy, uh, Mr. Nicka Pope, is talking about. And it, in a lot of ways, it contradicts what the fuck he says. And, uh, you know, we can even say that Travis Walton... I mean, I wonder if they go to a... Uh, a UFO conference together. What does Travis Walton say to Nick Pope? Because, uh, you know, Nick Pope and Travis Walton really see things a bit differently, don't they? I mean, Travis got abducted. Uh, he experienced uh, a couple of the alien beings that are going to be discussed in this particular article. And I would think he would say that they're not exactly all just a bunch of androids. Non-human, non-life forms should I say. But anyway, uh, the headline for this article is, We talked to the doctor who treats people who think they've been abducted by aliens. Now, this is uh, an article that's presented by Vice.com. Vice.com, actually, the original interview was with this uh, Nicolas Dumont, who is a psychologist, and it occurred in France. So this is translated from French. Oui, oui. It might be a little bit screwed up, but... I'm only going to go over two Q&As because they're they're really interesting. The Q&A is fairly long. I would suggest if you have an interest in alien abductions and you think that it's only happening in the United States, you've got to listen to what this guy had to say about the shit that's going on in France. Uh, Mr. Dumont is very busy in treating patients who say they are being abducted. It's a great story indeed. The first thing is that he says, from his experience, these are not hallucinations or uh, spiritual, uh, you know, second coming or something like that. These guys are not uh, not experiencing something fake. And the reason why he says that is because some of them actually have physical evidence. And you know, a lot of people will say that this is merely sleep paralysis. That basically these guys, uh, their brain woke up way faster than their body, so they're paralyzed. And so basically they go through sleep paralysis and all this shit is just uh, happening in their head. The problem is that if your body is paralyzed, how do you have physical uh, artifacts, basically scratches or... Uh, markings on your body which uh, coincide with what you're saying you experienced not something that you really uh, go through when it comes to sleep paralysis really you're not exactly going to be uh, uh, physically harming yourself you can't even fucking move but you hear that a lot that's usually something that people say all the dang time so one question that the vice uh, pretty much proposed to this doctor opposed to this doctor they didn't propose to him. I don't. Uh, he's probably married. Uh, that they posed to this doctor is how many patients have you seen who think they've been abducted by aliens? Uh, and so Nicholas Dumont says, uh, basically, he says a lot of them don't really come in right off the bat, uh, just saying that they've been ab- abducted by aliens, right? But he says he's seen about one hundred patients, all in France, 
All French patients, I mean, he didn't have people flying in from the U.S. or the U.K. or Australia or China or Japan. These are all French patients. And they've all shown signs of being abducted. And out of those 100, he still sees five of them regularly. And as a matter of fact, in this discussion that he has here with Vice.com, he says that he has one patient by the name of Sonia, and uh, she has been experiencing abduction since she was a little kid. How do you say that in French? A wee kid? I don't know. But anyway, uh, there you go. So he says, you know, a lot of times they don't come in saying, you know, I'm a got a full blown, you know, abduction. Uh, they, they might come in and say, oh, I woke up, uh, I had this dream or something, and I woke up and I'm all beat up, and I've got, uh, I've got things that feel not too good happening to me. The second question is, uh, it's a sub-question to one of the interview questions they asked him. So Vice.com said, uh, you talk about beings. Are there multiple races of aliens trying to contact us? Now here you go. That's the million dollar question, right? You see this proposed weekly everywhere. Uh, some people say, oh, there's 50,000 races, races. There's like 30. Or there's uh, 12 primary or 6 or whatever. I don't. I really don't give a shit about that. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know. They're, none of them are human race, so <laughs> no fucks given. But anyway, uh, so basically, he does take his research, and he does tell us exactly what people are seeing. And you will be surprised. So either we, like I said before, when it comes to abduction cases, either we're all having the same psychosis worldwide, or there is something to this. Right? There is something to this that you can't deny you really can't deny and he says uh he's convinced that there are he says that there seems to be reptile aliens who sometimes provoke terror and other times a kind of love and i've read that so many different places some people say the reptilians are crazy as fuck and they're hateful and then some other people say the reptilians are really nice they're lovable like you can turn them over you scratch them on their belly and and they'll fall asleep on your lap now, the other ones uh, says that uh, the other ones that he's come across in his patients are the blonde humanoids who are very tall. Uh, they're paternal. They make their patients feel good. I mean, they're all around happening people. They like to party, it seems like. Where are these guys? Like right now. I mean, I would love to have them on the podcast so we can talk about stuff. Now, this is one of the uh, individuals. Uh, the races that uh, Travis Walton actually mentions, but it never makes it into the movie Fire in the Sky, believe it or not. Yeah, so if you ever go to see Travis Walton at a conference, he actually uh, mentions these guys, the the tall blondes, you know, the ones with the chiseled chin and uh, sexy curves. He does mention them, and uh, he describes them in the same way. So maybe this guy saw a fire in the sky, and he's he was waiting for it. Oh, he read Travis's book, should I say. But uh, that's another one that gets reported. And then he says, uh, then there's those other guys, the little gray men. He says they are particularly invasive and devoid of empathy. Uh, they are the worst because their coldness is very often traumatizing. Some patients also tell me of contact with insectoid creatures whom they perceive as superior entities, the ones in charge. Ain't that a bitch? I mean, uh, on our planet, the insectoids, uh, they're fucked because we step on them. We spray them. Uh, we just kill those fuckers off. Get, get me a can of Raid. Hey, that reminds me of the MIB movie. Wasn't it some kind of big insect that was trying to take out Will Smith and, uh, and his partner over there? Uh, yeah, so there you go. It seems that the hierarchy here is backwards. We kill insects, and uh, in the universe, they kill everybody else. They run things. Ain't that a bitch? But those are the aliens that uh, his patients are reporting as the ones that are in uh, actively abducting people in France. These are also very familiar, right? You look at abduction stories... And these races, uh, one, two, three, if not all, end up in those stories. Especially when you have people who've been abducted since they were children. 
Usually their stories, you pretty much come across every single one of those races. So what does that mean? Especially if you're a child. You're a child who wasn't watching E.T. or uh, Sigourney Weaver kick some alien ass. As a child, you don't see all of that. So how could it be a form of uh, universal psychosis or something like that? Because little kids, they're, they're not exposed to a lot of those things at the ages that some people report they're being abducted. I don't know. But I do recommend that you go into the description and check out this uh, this link and go to vice.com and read this interview. It's really lengthy. That's why I only had it down to two questions because, oh, shit, that's a, that's a lot of information there about what this doctor, uh, I'm sorry, not doctor, he's a psychologist, uh, about what the psychologist uh, was able to gather from these uh, these folks who went through all these experiences. So it's it's a very good read. Check it out. If you're into abductions, and I'm not talking about you actually going to abduct people, uh, especially you, the dude in Texas, uh, El Paso. Uh, yeah, so if you're into researching uh, abductions, it's, it's a good guy. It's a good guy to read about because uh, he's doing some work out there in France. So this is the episode for today, Friday, TGIF. It's the end of the week. Hoping you guys have a great weekend. We'll come back on Monday, but on Tuesday. For those of you who are not following me on social media, shame on you. I'm not happy with you right now. I really am not. But since you are reluctant on going into social media, the uh, episode image for the one on Tuesday, I'll probably drop that on Monday, and that that'd be messed up. Uh, the episode image will be an image of the uh, Rubber Dickies Awards right now. They should be delivered on Monday, so I'll be able to put that as the episode image so you guys can check it out because you refuse to go to social media. Uh, and also, I'll put it up on you You know, no fucks given. It's a little safe over there. You know what I mean? So this is Manny Moonraker. I'm checking out. Time to enjoy the weekend. Ciao.